Awesome. What an amazing song. I love that song. Thank you so much to Bane Uzumaki and Heavy Heart. Heavy Heart is actually in town with me visiting Southern California this week. Um, but welcome back, everybody. I'm Cause Nova. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing the Anime Crunch Show. Myself and fellow streamer Fallen Neophyte, as well as Nine Lives, our guest host, who knows so much, so knowledgeable. Love having Nine Lives on the show. But welcome back to the Anime Crunch Show, everybody. We're doing. Um, we're going to be analyzing and deep diving into Haikyuu, the volleyball anime. I think you guys have probably seen it if you surf Hulu. Um, or if you pay attention to manga and anime at all, you've definitely seen it. Um, but it's a very interesting show. I have a lot to say about the show, um, but I'm really excited to get into it. So we're going to jump in and unmute. Before that, I want to give a quick shout out to Team Devolve, my homies. They're over on YouTube Live right now. If you check out the Discord, Devolve Ryan and Devolve J or, um, J Drifts 9K are live right now with the Team Devolve podcast talking about esports news, gaming news, Halo Infinite, and Zelda. I'm going to have them up in the background. Um, you can see them here right now. We're about to switch over and go say what's up to Fallen, but uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate it, and we're let's get into the Anime Crunch show. Nothing's ever gonna bring you down. I gotta I gotta mute Fallen from you guys so you can. <laughs> he's getting down. Let's get his video up. Awesome. Um, and then I'll go unmute in Discord. Hey, Nine Lives, what's up, dog? I was just shouting you out. <laughs> no, what's up, man? Do you go live? Do you stream on Twitch? I do not stream on Twitch. I've been meaning to 
get set up to do it. But... Do you want to tell people where we can find your work, or do you have like a homepage or social media I, where we can find yes, you? Yes, well, I do. I can um, actually, I can send you the link to my YouTube, which is where I primarily do most of my stuff. Uh, I also have Twitter, but I mostly just use that to like share pictures of anime and manga and stuff. Thank Perfect. You. Yeah, if you send Nothing this to crazy. me, I'll drop them in chat. I will send you a link. Perfect, dude. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, of course, dude. Great. You're so knowledgeable. I love having you here. He's like, Nine Lives wants to come. I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, bring him in. Oh, yeah. this, it only makes like, our job easier. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is one of my favorite animes. So when he he called me at like 10.30 or 11 at night, and he was like, yo, we're doing Haikyuu. I was like, I'm in. <laughs> in. I'm, I'm in. in. Let's go. That's but, awesome. Um, let's see. Where is the link? Where is the link, man? Sorry, chat. Messing with some uh, technical stuff here. There we okay, go. I, it'll be easier if I just type it, I guess. I'll yeah, because then I can copy it and paste it. Yeah, I'm doing it in the anime crunch. Chat. Got it. Oh, actually, and yeah, it's um, it's also right there in my little my little thing below my name on Discord. It's just youtube.com slash nine lives deep dives. There Perfect. I'm grabbing that link for you right now, chat. Bada bing, bada boom. There you go. If you guys want to check out Nine Lives, he's gonna, our special guest host. You guys have definitely met him before. Um, very knowledgeable on anime and manga. Didn't didn't you write your dissertation on this series? Uh, <laughs> I've written a lot about this series. <laughs> I have a, a lot of stuff that I am not. Honestly, it seems like there's a lot to analyze. There's a lot to, the, mm -hmm. I mean, this show can really, you can really tear it apart and really rip mm -hmm. it down. There's there's really a like very few series in my opinion are as chock full of like discussion points and stuff like that. Exactly. Exactly. There is just a lot to say in terms of developing characters. Do you know who wrote and illustrated it? Um. Yes. the The mangaka is named Haruichi Furudate. He did a couple other short manga before Haikyuu, but Haikyuu was definitely like his breakout. His series. breakout series. Nice. Uh. In terms of the animation, I believe here. Let me just look it up. I think it was Studio Bones, but I also don't know if that's right. Right. So was it printed well, before it was um, publicized? Mm -hmm. or, or that's what I thought. Yes. It it started as a manga and weekly show and jump. The anime was by. <laughs> that's good, guys. Out. What up, brother? <laughs> How we doing? How we doing? Welcome, guys. How are we all feeling today? Fantastic. Nice... Beautiful. I have literally, um, I, I, I do have a video about uh, one of the characters, which I'll drop in the chat later once we kind of yes. get to that. Feel free to drop that in there, man. Um, but yeah, I. But, be, we appreciate be you being here. Too. I appreciate you offering me the opportunity to talk about one of my favorite series. Because, as I said, this is one of my all-time favorite anime. Yeah, man. The one thing I can say, the, the literally two words that encompass this anime for me is character development. It is Absolutely. impeccable. Impeccable with this anime, man. I agree. That's yeah, I agree, and it's some of the mm. best character development I've ever seen in an anime, because that's what they spent all their time on. They spent like every waking moment of that anime is someone growing as a person. <laughs> and if you guys don't know, the anime that we're talking about is called High Q. It is by far the best sports anime that I've uh, personally seen. I've seen a lot of the kind of like the uh, fighting sports animes. I've seen like the uh, kind of karate sports animes, all those. I never thought I would be really interested in like a volleyball anime. So my buddy would just like said, hey, uh, check this volleyball anime out. It's really good. You definitely should watch it. I was like, all right, let me go ahead and watch it. As soon as I got like a few episodes in, I was hooked. It was Same. so mm -hmm. well executed. The animation's beautiful. The character development is like par. It's, it's, like, it's second to none right now in my book. Mm -hmm. And it's just oh, very well just, executed. Just you wait, buddy. I know you just you just finished season three. And I think that like, I think season three, in my opinion, is one of like the single best like seasons in an anime. Like the pacing of season three is just, it's just undeniably like every single second of watching the Shida Torizawa match, I was like on the edge of my seat. I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And Dude, exactly. 
it's just great. It's such a such a fantastic like feel good show. I will I will stand high Q until I die. This is easily one of my favorite series to watch and to talk about. Awesome. I mean, so, like as so, Colin so. said, it gripped me the same way, and it's probably gonna make its way as I finish up season. Well, f- season one's done. As I work my way into season two, three, and four, it's probably gonna end up being in my top ten. <laughs> yeah, if you're enjoying it already, like a lot, you just you just have a lot more amazing. Yeah, I'm stoked. Anime. Three yeah, more it seasons. only gets better. Yeah, three more seasons. Better. I love when I get into a uh, an anime and there it's almost done, so I just can binge everything. Yeah, the manga well, yeah, is cause... finished. Yeah, because there's what you you finish season one, so there's season two, season three, season four, and then uh, hike you to the top, correct? Yep, and then I get hike you to the top is season four. It is season four. Okay, so you have three more seasons. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and just I've done the math, and you know, unless they do something like um, devolve, I don't know. Or are you call it cause Nova now? You I just know call me Nova. Too. That's Nova. what everybody calls me. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah Nova season three is just one single game it's 10 it's 10 episodes one single game and um the, assuming they don't do anything like interesting like that for the remainder of the series we probably still have a good like two full seasons of anime plus nice. an opus series um, awesome so yeah Ooh, um, fun you know, fact. a lot of amazing stuff to look forward to fun fact tokyo gold just released the ovas uh on crunchyroll i believe or in funimation one of the two so, if you guys are interested in that anime, definitely check them out. Yeah, I finished season one, and then everything was so different in season two. I kind of got scared and haven't finished it, and it's, I need to go well, back. Okay. So, for Tokyo Ghoul, season two does not follow – it's not canon. It doesn't follow the manga oh, at all. Oh, really? Um, Good to but, know. But, yeah. but, but it's still a very enjoyable watch. I really enjoyed watching season two. I, uh, the ending of season two was a hit different because they took the main theme song from season one. They slowed that shit down a little bit and they so made you good. get in your feels. It was so <laughs> well executed. Highly recommend watching it. But the issue is, is that if you go from season one to season two, you won't understand what's happening in season three. There is no connection. You'll have to fill in the gaps by watch, like reading it, right. like reading the manga or uh, filling in the gap with like a summary online because you won't understand what's happening there. Hmm. Yeah, it's... um. I think it's one of those situations of the 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 studio go, thinking they're not going to get the funding for a third season, so they try to wrap it up in their own way. Right, and then they ended up getting a season, a series, uh, a third season. So they were like, okay, and they kind of picked it up from where they might have left off if they had followed the manga. But it yeah. it is a little bit confusing, and I know for manga readers, they did not really enjoy the Tokyo Ghoul like season three and four adaptations for that reason but yeah it was a fun it's a fun watch you know it definitely does not make a lot of sense in some ways but you know it is what it is yep i have a lot to catch up on there (laughs) i got up into the point like i said where things started (laughs) to get pretty crazy like right up into a season or season two episode three i think is where i stopped Mm -hmm. watching during that big battle um Mm -hmm. yeah it was intense (laughs) Oh yeah, I no, it is good. It is very good. I as far as like as as far as like the the animation and fight choreo go, it's a very well done anime. It's well conceived, but for yeah. for people who read the manga, it kind of was lackluster. From what I didn't read the manga, but gotcha. I, I do know people that have read it, and they said it was a little bit of a disappointment, and that happens sometimes. Unfortunately, you know. It does. It does. Sometimes it happens to some of our favorite series, but that's anime and manga. There are there are real life circumstances that play a role on these writers and illustrators that uh, that mm-hmm. take tolls. That take oh yeah, tolls. Wonder where we're yeah. gonna start at. Where should we start? Maybe just like jump into characters. Looks like Fallen's doing a little bit of chatting with chat. Uh, speaking mm-hmm. of which, how's everybody doing in chat today? Great Catsby, it is so good to see you here. Thank you so much for being here, homie. How are you today? Um, have you seen IQ? And if you have, have you seen all of it? Or oh, that's me. It? That's me. That's all my right. Twitch. That's oh, that's you. Twitch. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I dropped all my right. links. That's my links. Gotcha. I'm back, yeah. guys. Yeah. I got raided by Curtis. Well, thanks for being here. I had to say hello to everybody. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Alrighty. So, do you want to go into a deep dive into into basically each and in each individual character that we meet in season one, and kind of just kind of talk about him a little bit? I mean, obviously, the first character that we meet is Hinata, right? The main right. character mm-hmm. of this entire story and this entire experience. Um, do you, Nine Labs, want to give us a little rundown of who Hinata is, 
what his struggles are as an individual when he first enters the season and how he develops throughout the entire season as a whole. Absolutely. Um, I, I did do a, a little bit of mental preparation for, for the stream. Uh, I'm a big fan of Haikyuu, as I've said prior. And uh, Hinata is definitely one of my favorite like uh, shonen protagonists. Uh, having seen a lot of a lot of like the battle shonen series and being a big fan of series like My Hero Academia and you know stuff like that, um, I did really enjoy the more realistic, you know, the, the human experience. Yeah, it's a, will, it's a right? lot. It, yeah, there's a lot more human, and that's not to say people like Midoriya or you know fucking or Mob aren't aren't human, but it's a lot easier to relate to a short kid who just wants to play volleyball. And that's kind of where, that's where we are in season one. Uh, I feel, like, the sh- I feel ahead, like that's very much so across the board. Um, I feel like each individual character that's presented in season one, um, every individual person can relate to a different one, right? They all have different mm-hmm. human experiences within their high school experience and their volleyball mm-hmm. experience. So, for example, you have individuals who would probably resonate more with Hinata, where you have other individuals who resonate more with Tsukishima. So it varies mm-hmm. as a whole, depending on who you were at growing up and what experience you would relate to more. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think they tried to capture, if you look at each character, you can kind of pick out a general emotion that runs them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's definitely done on purpose. Like, you have Shinata, who's the happy-go-lucky positivity. You have um, Tage- Takeyama? 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 Kageyama. Kageyama. Kageyama, yeah. who is like more intense. Um, and, and, it, and it wouldn't really be anger, but probably something along those lines. And you, like I said, you can kind of like, at least I feel like you can kind of attach one of the general emotions to each one of the characters. Mm-hmm. Even though they are, you know, yeah. there is a spectrum and a range of emotions with each character. Um, there's like mm-hmm. this overarching theme to each player. Yeah. That's and very I th- true. Mm-hmm. I think that one of my favorite parts, one of my favorite like aspects of IQ is that everyone kind of has everyone has a very distinct personality but it's all different manifestations of their passion for volleyball you know how much how beautiful they find this sport what it means to them and and even though all the characters are very different and you know there there's a slew of unique and very you know engaging personalities in IQ but it all comes back to one simple thing and that it's that we love volleyball and volleyball's fun. And I think that's a very just, it's an overarching theme, but it feels good to watch. It's just satisfying to watch people do it, doing what they enjoy. Um, and as someone who played sports at like a semi-competitive level all throughout my life, mm-hmm. uh, the feeling of, you know, it recreates that feeling of stepping onto the field or, you know, stepping onto the court and you hear the, you hear the whistles blowing people's cleats you know, in the grass or squeaking on, you know, it's just, it, it makes you want to get up and go do something. And I, and I love that. I love that feeling. I mean, I, I also love the fact that you have all these very unique and different characters, but they all play a very specific role within their team. Right. And they all have like their, they have their actual role as a team playing volleyball. And then they have their own unique role as individuals within the dynamic of the team. Right. You have Daichi, Mm -hmm. who's kind of like the big brother, the overarching kind of like almost borderline father figure among all the individuals right Mm -hmm. then you got like um you have individuals who are more so comedic relief you have tanaka you got uh uh, nishinoya you have uh you have like hinata's also has some comedic relief in there too you have individuals like Tsukishima Mm -hmm. who are more so distant and kind of indifferent to the situation until their character kind of develops a bit more then you have other individuals Mm -hmm. who come into play like uh, oikawa who's a completely unique individual who has his own dynamic as well and he also plays Mm -hmm. a role within developing kind of uh kind of karasuno a lot more too so yeah oikawa is one of my favorite characters so when we get we'll get we'll get to him and we'll (laughs) as far as people in the show oikawa is just all right we'll, we'll, we'll you know we'll get it we'll get there we'll get i get there. why but, you um, like him he has like the sherlock vibes he's the in, he's the thinker i i, I like ori oh too. just oh but just just you wait buddy i, <laughs> I, I don't want to be that guy like oh like i read the manga but like you, i know you just you're in season right. one right now and right you've got you've got so much amazing one of my favorite single moments like in the manga is oikawa yeah also what was i saying um the Sorry. stuff you said about no 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 comedic relief for like Tanaka and Nishinoya. Even yeah. the people who are like generally like the more like the positive characters, they have a lot 
of stuff going on in the back. Which yeah. you'll, you'll, me. you'll get to see that in season four as well. <clears throat> but I think you wanted to tailor this more towards just season one, right? Just like a more like an entry to the series type. Yeah, because yeah, we'll there's just okay. not enough time to get everyone. Yeah, we're, hyper, yeah. we're hyper focused on season one, but also like just kind of giving hints as to what is to come so that people can actually look forward to some new content as they continue watching it, right? So yeah. we don't want to give any spoilers out. But we want to get yeah. people hyped for the future, right? All right, now that's perfect. Perfect for me, buddy. What's up, perfect Swamp for City. me. I'm, Thank you. I'm for in for this. Here. Have you so, seen IQ? Uh, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> You're good. Um, so yeah, without I guess without further ado, we should start with the Hinata, right? We kind of got derailed for a second. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Let's talk about Hinata, who he is, mm. how he starts as an individual, and let's see how his experience progresses through the season, right? Mm. So the premise of Haikyuu is very simple. Shoyo Hinata, the main character, is a short kid who wants to play volleyball after seeing someone of similar stature on TV playing, like, you know, seeing another short person playing volleyball against people who are very much so bigger and stronger than him and still being the main carry of Karasuno's team. So he... Uh, Throughout his middle school experience, all he wants to do is play volleyball in a school that does not have enough players to form a volleyball team. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean he he looks up to the little giant, correct? That's that yep. was his, that was his uh, kind of main focal motivation for him to yeah. kind of get into volleyball because he was like and he was inspired because the little giant was a short guy just like him who was also uh, reaching to reach to the top, right? And he mm. wants to become the best. And he was also small. He also was in a similar experience to Hinata. And Hinata said, all right, if that guy can do it, I can do it too. And that mm. was kind of his motivation to pursue this career in volleyball, right? Right. And I think I think that's a pretty beautiful overarching theme. Generally, generally all of Haikyuu for me feels like, you know, it's a series that says, like, you can, you can do it as long as you work hard. That's got, that's a nice theme that kind of ex, ex, extends past just volleyball and can be applied to any any oh, yes. factor of life. And I have a lot more to say on that topic, but we'll get there when we get to Kageyama. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, what else do we have to say about Hinata? I mean, without saying much, you know, he <clears throat> he enters uh, his third year of middle school and finally gets enough people, a ragtag group of friends, to join a team so that they can play in the middle school tournament and that is where we're introduced to kageyama and if you want to talk about kageyama i you know i'll chime in i don't know i don't know where oh sure yeah i could yeah, take yeah. it i feel like kageyama is very much so the if he had to emulate a sin it would be pride right yes, and then he yes. grows out of pride like he has mm. he he resonates like he is the king he is the mm. best He's the key focal point of every game, right? And I feel like that's where he has to grow from. That's where he started off. I mean, he has to get humbled as an individual. And you see that experience in the first few episodes of season one, right? Yeah, Kageyama is very good. It's a very interesting character because he ha he has the skill. He's not Hinata. Hinata enters volleyball as basically a novice versus his counterpart, Kageyama, who is already viewed as one of the best setters of his age one of the best players of his age. Yeah. And so while Hinata, Hinata's, of course, his journey is also mental. Uh, it has a lot more to do with gaining the skills, you know, training his body versus Kageyama. It's all, it's more so all mental hurdles. And yeah. I actually, I actually really admire Kageyama for that. Right. I mean, also, if you notice, oh, sorry, Nova, no, go ahead. Um, the Kageyama um, as an individual, he was he's so incredibly good at the game, but he was denied from all the big schools because of his mental uh, situation, how he was as a person. Yeah, right. And between the two, as you guys have kind of talked a little bit about Kageyama, what's up, Black God? Um, I, I kind of wrote this out in my notes. It's the classic dynamic, right? You have one Kageyama, natural talent and physique, and then you have two Hinata, extreme training and effort. Like, the two dynamics that can lead to greatness, like, not can lead to greatness, but you often see, especially in sports and team sports, you have, uh, like, players who were born tall or born with the physique for the sport, and then you have players like Hinata who were born short but have the drive and, like, the determination to train hard enough to get there. So, like, I don't know. It's just a very classic dynamic, and we see it a lot, and um, I'm, like, kind of blanking out right now, but I had examples. My Hero Academia. My yeah, Hero Academia, my Hero Academia is perfect. It's in, it's in all kinds of 
shown in anime or the, naruto the and gifted Sasuke. from birth yeah exactly yeah, gifted like, from birth versus the works hard to get it and, yeah yeah exactly yeah, i mean that also classic dynamic we can't we can't gloss over the fact that he not to have some savage hops like oh, just the beginning oh he absolutely can, like he jump. he yeah that's his thing that's like kind of why i feel like that's how they got him in like you know without that jump what is he not to not that he couldn't yeah. be quick and whatever and all this. Like, I understand – because he is physi- – like, they say his um his endurance is, like, in- unmatched or whatever. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude rides 30 minutes to and from school every day just because he wants to play volleyball at Karasuno. Like, he can – he his stamina – and people touch on this throughout the series that Hinata's stamina is probably the, the highest out of any character in, in yeah. the entire series. 100%. I mean, you can see the man's – like, he goes for a spike, right? And he'll do – he'll be a decoy and he'll – or he'll – bounce it off the blocker's hands and he'll immediately land and then bolt to the other side of the net and go for another spike right, right. so he has a stamina to just keep moving back and forth back and forth all over the court that's why he's the perfect and the best decoy biker right you're right so and it's also it makes it hard for the opposing team to like basically keep up with him right because he is a second to none with stamina he's always bolting around and he's so small that he can work his way around the court around all these large individuals really efficiently and kind of off topic not necessarily off topic but and i was realizing this as i watched it especially in the very first episodes and some of the episodes we see kageyama in his bedroom with some manga stacked up actually by the foot of his bed which is really cool um you do not see any interaction from parents in the first season at all the parents are not no. there at the house. The parents are not there at the game. They don't even mention, like, any kind of adult supervision whatsoever. And I understand that they're in high school. I just thought that was interesting that the artists and the illustrator or the writers were like, nah, not needed. <laughs> Later in the anime, you do meet some parents here and there. I figured uh, eventually. But only, only, only briefly. You don't really, I mean, in my point, I just finished season three, and I haven't met, like, Hinata's parents yet. And I haven't met, they, like, Kageyama's parents They never really show yet. up. Yeah, they don't really show up. It's not really a spoiler. It's just, yeah, they don't really show up. And I mean, I don't think it's really necessary um, for the most part. And it's just, I don't know. I don't don't think it would really build much, but I do agree that it's. No, I'm not saying it needs to be there or anything. I just thought it was interesting that usually. uh, I mean, I mean, like, eventually eventually when they go to play on, on the national stage, you still never see, like, that is like. Uh, like people watching these kids on TV and you still don't see their parents. That's what I thought was weird. I was like, like, Oh my God. Like their parents aren't there at the games. Like, (laughs) okay. Yeah, no, it is funny. It is funny. But I mean, I mean, if I know if my kid was on the national stage in volleyball, I would a hundred percent be there embarrassing the shit at him with like a sign and like everything fucking losing it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, cross nose in nationals. I'm there in a full crow cosplay with, you know, I'm in a full full cosplay. (laughs) <laughs> that would be oh, perfect. Yeah. That would oh, be so awesome. Mm. Oh, nine lives. Oh, this is why we have right. you back. You're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, so, part of part of my sniffling, I did, my allergies are bad today. So if you, if you hear me, okay. yeah, I'm sniffling yeah. too. Yeah. All right. So let's move forward. So we talked about Hinata. We talked about Kageyama. But by the way, if you guys don't know, Kageyama is the main setter. For Kurasano, you also have another one, the Sugawara, who's a little bit older, but Kageyama is very skilled and he's very much so their main setter on the team. And him and Hinata in the beginning of the season actually play against each other in the middle school games. And um, and Kageyama kind of like gets irked with Hinata and is like, ah, I don't like this guy. I gotta, I'm not, I don't like his energy. <laughs> I don't like his eyes. They just don't like each other, right? And then Kageyama thinks like very like he's like, inferior to him, right? And then Hinata does this one minty spike on him, and he was like, "Oh shit! Like that's actually really, really good." Right? I have a gift it. right here. I gotta I start. Out. I like that word. I gotta start using the word minty. Minty. I like yeah. That. Super <laughs> I like minty. That. Um. So then after that, they end up going to the same school. They still don't like each other, but then they realize that they are the perfect match for each other, right? Because Kageyama has a skill to place those balls right where Hinata's going to be because he's faster than everyone else. So they end up creating their own quick attack that kind of baffles everybody because it's so outrageous of how fast it is. Here's a shot of the quick attack chat. Yeah. Oh, and uh, one thing I do want to say real quickly is that one thing I do really appreciate about Haikyuu is 
as someone who never played volleyball as a kid, Haikyuu does a really good job of like introducing you to the sport and making oh. you feel like, oh, like yes. I understand what's going on without overloading you with rules. Oh yeah, they without, like, like slowly kind of you know, teach you how it works because it's like as and if if you watch the series with us, chat you like they don't play a lot of games right off the bat. They do a couple practice matches and there's a lot of practicing. So there's a lot of time for us to kind of understand how the game works. And it's not really that complicated of a game, to be honest. No, not really. Mm-hmm. I mean, you get, what, three touches, and then you got to send it over to the other side. Mm-hmm. Right, right, there, right. There are some rules they don't talk about, like, how the attack, like, the the attack, you can't, like, set from outside the attack line. Like, I read I read about volleyball rules after reading Haikyuu just because I was curious right. if there was, like, how accurate. anything I didn't know about. And it is very accurate. There are some rules they don't talk about. But I think it would kind of diminish, like, it would diminish the enjoyment by overloading you with info. Information, oh, yeah. yeah. They stress it a bit. I mean, there is a lot of conversation that happens in between the ball being passed from mm-hmm. character to character. Well, and you, you, also, you also see a lot of the rules kind of take place when you see each character developing, right? Where yeah. he knocks it at the training camp and he's, oh, I don't think uh, Nova's there yet. But he learns various different techniques and skills that kind of add to like, oh, this is part of the rules. Okay. And you mm-hmm. see in certain matches when like someone hits a net, it doesn't count. Out. Uh, little things mm. like that will pop up and you'll learn the rules as the story progresses and as it keeps moving forward absolutely yeah one thing one thing i just learned from i was actually rereading uh some of the uh the haiku manga in preparation for this stream and one thing they always say is break point and i was like what is a break you know i didn't understand what a break point was a break point is when the team that served gets a point Versus a side out, which is oh, when the like, team that gotcha. received the serve gets a point. So a break point isn't necessarily when you get more than one point over your team. It's just if you serve the ball and you get a point, that's called a break point. I guess well, it doesn't really matter, but. Well, isn't there another term that's similar to the break point where like if the. So, for example, if a team is at 12 points, you're at 11, you match up to 12, right? And then you break past them to get to 13. You kind of break mm-hmm. their lead, right? That's yeah, another they, term they, I saw in there, too. Yeah, they always they always say break. Like that's a break point. That's a different use of the break point term. Gotcha. Okay. I, like I said, I'm not. I don't know. I don't know much about volleyball except from what I learned from Q. So if there's any actual volleyball players here in the chat, please enlighten us. We yeah, if curious. anybody's played volleyball in high school or <laughs> even for fun, like you know, let us know. Yeah, and uh, Swamp I, well, City, I, one of my viewers, is like super hyped. He's like, "I'm going to find it right now. I'm going to watch this. This is awesome." <laughs> So that's really cool. Um, and speaking on, yes. I think we were talking about Mint there for a second. I wanted to talk about this because I was I watch a, I listen to a podcast, and I know we shouldn't shout out um, our competition, but I shout out Abroad in Japan, a really awesome YouTube channel, a guy who lives over there. But he does a podcast, and they were talking about jet, the Japanese language that day. And um, I, I went ahead and watched a couple episodes of mm-hmm. – like I re-watched a couple episodes of the first season in English just to kind of see – what the difference was there and what it would be like to watch it in dubbed and if there was quite a difference. And I did find it was funny. I was watching the podcast and they were discussing how the Japanese obviously like borrow a, a shit ton of English words. Um, yeah. And it's kind of like mm-hmm. trendy. It's cool to, to speak English or to use English within your Japanese. And the term like minty is funny. The term Spartan has become very popular in Japan as an adjective to mean like awesome or cool but like that's like, cool oh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> like it's a spot yeah. um and i <laughs> i was like what um but i was watching mm. it in english i was watching a dubbed version and and this and that's like a recent thing that's very trendy in japanese society currently and that was in season one in one of the dubbed episodes like which also made me think that whoever's translating this is also probably a native speaker or at least mm. very up to date on their translations um because yeah a few episodes they're like oh it's spotting and they're like saying it and i was like oh my god that's hilarious what a connection um yeah. to like modern that's day awesome. japanese and linguistics yeah yeah i mean in ja- in you, japanese City. they borrow a lot of english terms i mean like i know you guys have seen jujutsu kaisen and toto saying best of friend though like that's uh not best really friend, it's not like for the <laughs> meme value like you know the japanese 
Thank you so much, Swamp City. I really, 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 I'm muted so I could talk to you. Thank you so much for the 200 biddies, man. I really, really, really appreciate that. We're having a good time, and I hope you like this. The votes are up in the Discord if you guys want to vote on the next series. So right after this, we have three days to vote on the series that are up right now. It's um, Gundam, Iron-Blooded Orphans, Psychopaths, and do Ra Ra Ra. three of my favorite anime series. So anyone that wins, I'm stoked with and I'm really excited for. Um, and that'll be our next meeting. Two, two, two weeks from now. So not next Sunday, but the Sunday after we'll be meeting again for the Anime Crunch Club. But thank you so much, Swamp City. I'm going to unmute and get back in here with the guys. All that jazz, too. Yeah. So moving forward, we talked about Hinata and Kageyama, mainly your two main characters right now, where you see them kind of develop as individuals, and then you have the rest of your team that are also main characters as well. Moving forward, I mentioned Daichi. Um, he is the team captain, guys. He's also one of the third years. So there's a handful of third years here. You have Daichi, Sugawara, and Asai, um, right? Correct yep. me if I'm wrong, but those are all third years, right? So yeah, do you guys want to talk about? Do you guys want to talk about Daichi a little bit? Talk about his character, who he is, all that jazz too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so Daichi is a third year, and if you guys like went to high school, then you understand how high school works with year one, two, three, and four. And I don't. I think in Japan they only do three years of high school because it seems yeah, like the third years yeah, leave. Yeah, it would be it would be sophomore. It would be our sophomore to senior. Gotcha, gotcha. So yeah, yeah Daichi is technically in in you know Western culture a senior, um, along with uh Asai. Uh, is that how you say his name? Asai. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. Asai, uh, who is, you know, known as the ace and we'll get into him in a minute, but, um, Daichi is the team captain. He's been here this whole time. He's kind of been with the team, helping it get together, kind of helping the team did. And they went to nationals, didn't they? His first year. No, they went no, to no. nationals the, the year, year before, before him. He joined. Yeah. yeah. That was the year he, when he was the year, like his last year of middle school is when the little giant was the third year. And yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So he All three just of them missed it. Yeah, all three of them joined for the same reason he not to did because they right. saw them play on and, TV and they wanted to, you know, go to nationals. Right, and Daiichi's yeah. overarching goal is to get back there. He wants to bring Katasuna back to nationals. He wants to bring the school back to greatness. He wants to bring the Fighting Crows back up. Um, they've adapted the term. What do they call them? The Sleeping Crows or the the Wingless Crows? Wingless Crows. Yeah. It's, it's so a he's, lot of, it depends on a your lot of yeah a lot of derogatory terms towards them. You know. But um, wingless crows is my favorite. That's actually my League crows. of Legends handle. <laughs> That's wingless awesome. Crows. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Daiichi's whole mission is to bring the team back to greatness. He's a really positive yeah. character in the beginning. He seems very like well put together in the beginning. Doesn't seem to have a lot of holes. We start to see a little bit of emotional troubles with Daiichi later. But as we first meet him, he's a very strong character. He's the captain. He seems to have a good head on his shoulders. Um, I, I was very likable. Um, especially in the first season. Yeah. Yeah, he's very, like, he's very much. Yeah, he's very much so like the 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 backbone of Kurosano. He's he's oh, kind of like their cool head. He, I just got a huge spoiler. He, <laughs> I read a bit of this what? article and it tells me where he uh, currently works, and that sucks. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that sucks. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, it makes perfect mm -hmm. sense that Daiichi would work there, but damn. <laughs> yeah, he's but yeah, he um. Yeah, Daichi is very much so like the the backbone of Karasuno's, you know, morale. Mm -hmm. He's whenever they're kind of he I actually think he's a fantastic like iteration of a sports team captain. He's What's always up, yeah, Levi? The, How you doing, man? This is our anime and manga crunch club. Uh, he's called anime crunch where more we so discuss than anime most and manga every other week. Uh this week we're discussing you know, the, team, Haikyuu, the volleyball just series. Consistently reliable. That's a, it's me, I like that about Fallen Neophyte, fellow streamer, and our good um, friend Nine Lives. So moving forward from Daichi, I mean then you have another character which is Sugawara. Uh this guy is another setter. He was the, he was the setter before Kageyama kinda of came in and said I'm alpha, but like Sugawara also has a lot of other roles and dynamics that go into the team, and they actually use him very tactically uh, towards the latter seasons, right? He oh, starts yeah. going in, they'll have like two setters in the game. He also has like different tactics, right? Where Kageyama kind of can place the ball wherever he wants it. Sugawara uses plays and uses tactics and what using like hand symbols and whatnot to get people to kind of do kind of techniques and strategies in a game, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting, different dynamics, different play styles when it comes into volleyball, right? Yeah, I kind of yeah. see him as like a second captain. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he's able to keep balance within the team. He's kind of almost like a voice of reason sometimes in certain scenarios, right? So they very described him. Character. Would they describe him as he, serious and polite? Yeah, 
He, in, in, it's in, funny in, they describe him as that because he's actually one of the most hot-headed members of the team, and you'll see that later in the season or later okay. in the show. Really? Like, he's wouldn't have guessed. Oh that yeah, he's constantly one. like screaming at people. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, just, it, just quick little interjection. So Somi came into my chat and said those words that we were talking about are called loan words. That's what they're actually called in Japanese language because yeah, they're loan, words that right. aren't part of their culture or whatnot, so they loan them so they can say them. That's really interesting. Interesting. Loan wow, words. thank you for that info. I am uh, thank you for the chime in. I'm glad for that. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I know hamburger's one. Hamburger. <laughs> hamburger. Yeah, hamburger. <laughs> God, we're those guys who think they speak Japanese from Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my pronunciation is better than my actual vocabulary. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that's a big pog right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. So then we are uh, moving on from Sugawara. Uh you also have another third year called Asai, right? He is one he is considered the ace of the team. He actually isn't there in the beginning of the season, right? He comes in later because he got into a situation previously in the previous season where he got um, basically shut down by date tech, right? Yeah. Oh, I loved, and I love that. Echo. Before we move on, on, that is a mis- mispronunciation. This, that, that word is pronounced date. The, yeah, the Japanese date. don't have echo. like long vowels. So it, yeah, that oh, pissed me true. off because even in the sub, they were saying date and I was like, it's date clearly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, it, it's it's subtitled. <laughs> and I'm not, but not, not like coming to you, Fallen. Tech, I'm just saying for the show, I was a little shocked by that. I was like, huh, they got they even had like the Spartan term and they had loan words, but they mispronounced Date. <laughs> they might have been to kind of like be more widely accepted to, I guess, like our audience as well. You yeah, know? try to get to that Western market too. Because I think this anime was yeah. certainly aimed toward the West too. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh yeah, I mean, Haikyuu performed very well in America, from what I understand. I mean, Americans love sports, right? So, yeah, I mean, we have it's a very lot of high school sports digestible. is a big deal here. <laughs> so that was really cool. Uh, yeah, Asahi. Um, I actually was thinking about Asahi's character uh, last night, and I do feel kind of bad for him because he he constantly gets overshadowed by Hinata and. Mm-hmm you know by kageyama but he's actually really good at volleyball yeah and i mean man's is powerful he's had some great mm -hmm. back attacks too and phenomenal serves as well yeah he Mm -hmm. definitely fills that role of like the uh the the goon right the tall guy who isn't as smart and they make that clear toward the end of the season when he's being talked to about you know you shouldn't continue playing you shouldn't go to nationals you should be studying and he's like i'm not even going to college i'm playing volleyball (laughs) like (laughs) yeah like that was so funny but i was like yeah that's that's asay's character he's not the brightest he's not dumb by any means but he's not necessarily like they kind of you know he's it's power over intelligence with this character yeah, he's not the studious type. He's just he he whacks the ball hard. Right. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I hit the ball hard. It goes down on ground. <laughs> That's basically how it works. But like he's he is a very powerful player, right? And he's very useful to the team because I mean you have the variety. The kind of like it's always up in the air who's gonna actually spike the ball. And you see later that the team develops a lot of techniques and strategies to kind of confuse their enemies. And they actually show this kind of dynamic where. Basically, every team is good at one thing, but since Karasuno has basically started from the scratch again, they don't have anything that they have to protect, right? They don't have to yeah. protect a specific tactic, a specific strategy that they're known for. They can do literally anything. So that's why they're such a, yeah. a wild card when it comes to certain mm-hmm. games, because the te- enemy yeah. team doesn't know what to expect. Whereas you look at certain teams like Aoba Josai, where everything's kind of circled around uh, uh, Okawa, right? Whereas Karasunu mm-hmm. has so unique and so diverse that you don't know what to expect half the time. Yeah. Oikawa said Agreed. that after the Shiro Torizawa game. He said, you know, since, you know, that what makes Shiro Torizawa and, and Seijo powerhouse schools is the fact that they have a specific style that they play. But since Karasuno just kind of came up out of nowhere, they don't have a style they need to protect. And for that reason, they're willing to just kind of do anything during a game. It's like yeah. very exciting to watch. Oikawa has a quote, another quote where he he's like, "It's right after they're beaten by Shizao, I think in the uh, in the, yeah." And he says, "Um, like even our like we were beat by pure power because that was like like mm-hmm. and they're in you know Oikawa's team is intelligence or or cunning and skill like that's their their positive as well as him being a strong player. But like yeah, it's definitely pointed out that each team has kind of their own powerhouse or at least their own like you said their own perspective that." 
kind of drags them to the top, and they have to protect that. They have to make sure that their defense is on point. People can't read it. Um, but with Cody's, uh, K- Katasuna, I can't say that name. Katasuna, like you said, there's so many young players and so much talent being developed. They can not only do they have they don't have a certain technique they have to protect, but they also have many routes they can take as a team. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think. Uh, All right, I'm back. Sorry. I th- about that. Yep. No, you're good. I th- I think that what makes one of the things that makes the matches so exciting is the fact that you you know when you go like almost every single powerhouse school they play against has something they're known for you know in terms of a play style. But Karasuno just kind of does does whatever the whatever whatever they need to to win and. Uh, it's very it 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 leads a lot of a lot of excitement and a lot of uh, a lot of adrenaline to the game. Yeah, and we see that in their attack styles. Just in the first season, you have the the quick attack between Kageyama and Hinata. Then you have you know uh, Kageyama tossing them off and faking using Hinata as a decoy to send over to uh, Tanaka, and or the third attack where you have the double fake from Hinata Tanaka, and then it goes back to Asahi. Um, so yeah, they definitely have a, a wide range of attack styles as far as the first season. It's very Absolutely. true. Now you can go into another set of characters, right? The other first years outside of Hinata and Kagayama, you have Tsukishima and Yamaguchi, right? <clears throat> so Tsukishima is kind of a, a little bit indifferent to volleyball. He kind of, and in the first season, you don't really see much about him. He kind of seems like a like an asshole, right? Kind of like a dick. Yeah, he's, um, he's supposed to just be a dick. Yeah, he's like he's no nonsense. Dick, yeah, uh, yeah, literally no nonsense. He just like thinks he's he just thinks he's above everybody else, in my opinion. And he's one of your blockers slash spikers because man's is tall, right? Yamaguchi is Tsukishima's like kind of best friend. Um, he also That's doesn't really have he doesn't really have a direct role. I would say in the first season, no, he, he doesn't. Does, he later develops his role as a player upon on this team, and you see some great character development out of these two in the latter seasons. Oh yeah, this is not really a huge spoiler, but Yamaguchi eventually becomes captain. Hmm. Like in the in the later se- seasons, well, not seasons, like after like in the manga, he he's the captain eventually. And the way season one ended, I assumed that Yamaguchi, like coming from such. I don't mean to say this in a derogatory sense, but such a weak player, kind of a weak character, I assume there was going to be massive growth there. And kind of yeah, the, he, he stepped in for the special serve in the last game, missed the serve, and I was like, well, he's either going to get kicked from the team or he's going to rise to the top of the team. <laughs> no, he he his role is really important. Like later in the seat, like he's he ends up being one of their most important pinch servers. What is but, up, um, Jim Jam? Thank you so much for being here, dude. I can really well, use the talking about Tsukishima today. Thank you so much, bro. How you doing? Yeah. Suki being one of my favorite characters. Uh, can I can I talk about some of the stuff that happens in season two? Or like, I don't want to ruin it. We can hint at like his type of character development, right? Does he have? He does have like a lot of monumental moments that kind mm. of make long strides in his personality as an individual, right? He's very yeah. angsty in the first season. He's very much so a no nonsense individual. He's kind of rude to a lot of people, and you don't really know, right? You don't understand why he's the way he is in the yeah, first season. Yeah, you don't season. have a motivation for him whatsoever. Yeah, you don't really know any kind of background to his character, and that's the beauty of this anime, right? Haikyuu really does a tasteful job when it comes to showing why individuals are the way that they are and why they're mm-hmm. motivated to act that the the way they did that they do, right? So that's the beauty of this anime, in my opinion. Every individual gets their background story. Even the enemy teams that they go up against, they still get background stories. And they really like to fill in the gaps, right? Why individuals are the way that they are. Right. So, yeah, Tsukishima, you can mention, like, what kind of changes he goes through. We give hints as to what's going to happen to him. But beyond that, I don't want to ruin any, like, backstory, you know? But yeah, on, okay. On that same, yeah, because if they, if they were, you know, they're interested in this, they liked the first season, we don't want to spoil the second for them. But as much as I love this show, as much as Fallen loves this show, and as much as uh, Nine Lives uh, definitely loves the show, I would not be opposed to maybe coming back and doing a season two, you know, doing another episode on season two or something in the future. Oh, if you guys yeah. are interested. Hey, man. Whenever you want to talk about Haikyuu, I'm I'm like I'll make the time. Well, there's just so much here in the first season. I can't imagine what the second would be like. And if people like it, why not? We could bring it back. 
Yeah, that's look. If you if you're interested in doing something like that, you just let me know, and I'll I'll make the time to hop on stream with you guys because um, I don't know. I don't. I think you might have been muted when I was talking to Fallen earlier, but um, season three I I found is one of the best like seasons of an anime in my opinion, just like overall in terms of. That's a that's, a, that's just, a big statement coming from Nine Lives. Guys. It's a bold statement. Yeah, I but I know and I know it's a bold bold statement. But I just I loved it. It's so good. Well, and I don't mean uh, that you're like I don't mean it the way you think. I, I mean it in more so that you've watched and read so much, like that your experience in this field, and then for you to say that is definitely kind of you know ground groundbreaking. <laughs> that's a big statement yeah. coming from you. Yeah. I don't know if I'd even say it's the best. Maybe, maybe not even the best. But in terms of personal enjoyment, season three of Haikyuu is one of the seasons of anime that I personally enjoyed watching more oh, than almost bro, anything else. Ever. I couldn't stop watching it. Mm-hmm. It was so good. You had to watch the next episode every time because it was always left on a cliffhanger, and it was always some sort of emotional draw. I was like, I have to see what's next. I have to see what's next. So I burnt through season three faster than I burnt through season one and season two. It was so yeah. good. It was season, so three, well yeah. done. season three is only 12 uh 10 episodes and like i i think i watched it in one night i think my girlfriend and i we got to season three and ordered we literally some food, we just sat down and we bed. watched the whole thing in one sitting <laughs> sounds awesome yeah, so, well this uh this guy in my chat vagabond he goes the those kids just try so hard it's so compelling i'm like it, it's, they do it's it almost so tear jerking how, how how much effort they put in and what they go through i mean there are times when i was like oh like the brotherhood vibe gets me every time i grew up with brothers i have a lot of friends wow i have a lot of friends i don't have a lot of friends. yo way to flex bro <laughs> wow Must he be has nice. a lot of friends <laughs> nice, okay fam. rephrase i have Mr. a lot of friends Popular that i've been close here. with since i was young so we've been friends for like over 10 years you know what i mean like a lot of guys that we, we stay close over and, and it's just like when i watch the show it makes me think of them it makes me think of the things i went through with my friends and it just so very well brings up the feelings of nostalgia i mean even the high school vibes i was like oh man i miss high school like i was watching it <laughs> i was like life was easy man all these guys cared about was volleyball and chicks <laughs> like yeah chat i have my chat calling you pop you lair um... oh my god i deserve it chat i'm a fucking goofball <laughs> back of phone goes bro i have friends too four of them count them i got four <laughs> For, does my mom count? <laughs> does, 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 like, if if so, I mean, then I have three. Your, <laughs> technically, your mom can count, right? Your your parents technically are your best friends when you're first starting out in life, right? True, true, true. I just realized you have a sister. Um, friend or only friend? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, only friends. <laughs> um, and then you can go. So we talked about Tsukishima. Yamaguchi's kind of like. He's more so like the voice of reason for Suki for a, a lot of the first season. He kind of just balances him out a little bit. Um, but Yamaguchi, you don't really see much out of him in character wise in his development until like, I think season two yeah. about yeah. Uh, season two is when you see a lot come out of him. And then after that, when you get to season three, he's now a key player on the team. Right yeah. now, moving mm-hmm. forward, we have the second years. We have Tanaka and Nishinoya who have very, very kind of upfront in your face personalities, right? They are, they, they want to be called the senpai, right? Of the team from the first year. So they yeah, want to feel kind of that kind of level of importance. <laughs> And you don't actually see Nishinoya come back for a little while, too. He's not there initially in the beginning of the season, either. Yeah, he's suspended for, like, knocking the toupee off the principal or something like that. Oh, shit. Yeah, so yeah, something like that. <laughs> so I wait, thought it was – about... was it that? Because I thought that happened in the hallway. That happens in no, the that... hallway earlier. I think it's because Nishinoya breaks that broom. Like yeah, he, he break, yeah he breaks something in a back he room, steps right? on that broom on accident and and like it's kind of understood that he did it in a rage um and i think that's why he is suspended i could be wrong though i think nine lives uh, i'm pretty sure sh- i'm pretty sure it was the thing with the principal but I that happens again season... in the hallway later too right am i like that happens to he not no, that was a... or is that a flashback no. Yeah, no, I think no, it was. I don't know. I don't know. No, you guys, no, it, I haven't no, watched it was, it was. It was Hinata and Kagayama. They were in. They were practicing, and the principal was there, and he happened to hit the ball, and it knocked his toupee off. Nishinoya did something out of rage uh, when something that happened with uh, a little bit influence from Asai and himself 
there was kind of a rage that he went through and he broke some stuff in the back room of the storage closet and then he was suspended for that and then he finally came back but then he had a moment where he's like oh i don't want to be here if acai is not here and then basically that's where you get into that whole arc where then acai is then brought back and their ace returns to their team right now if you guys want to talk a little bit about tanaka kind of the wild card individual he's also a key spiker um you actually see that he gets mvp every once in a while for the team as well um and he's he's basically one of the spikers he's also a receiver he's kind of like a versatile player on the team but his personality is just very much so outward and it actually plays a mental role in the competitive play against other teams too because other individuals get kind of irked at him because he's just like such like a like a, a an outbursting kind of personality and you you can't get tanaka's spirit down i mean even in some of his darker moments he he looks down at the floor he looks back up and he's like fuck it let's lick our wounds later he actually says that he's like we'll lick our wounds later we got nationals to focus on like you can't break tanaka's spirit and i love that about him yeah, and oh, no, yeah. there and there are points where he does get tested. His spirit does get tested, but that's why you have characters like Daichi and Sugawara and Asai and all those individuals mm-hmm. who kind of like get him back to where he's supposed to be, and then he's back to being the pinnacle of like the fire of the team, right? Absolutely. Mm, yeah, Tanaka is very much so like he plays a similar role in terms of like the team's morale to Daichi. It's like yeah, because he's because he's always. I don't know if upbeat's the word, but since he's always, uh, just I guess he's just always he's always being himself, and yeah, for that yeah. reason, it it gives the team the morale to stay, you know, to keep their heads up. Rather, I mean, than... he's also like the hype man, right? When someone yeah. does something good, he's like, "Let's go!" Like yeah. he's super hype. He gets super excited. You see this in later seasons where, like, him and Nishinoya, when so, like one of the other first years do something like really spectacular, they'll like jump on him and like punch him a little bit like yeah you did it like good job mm-hmm. they're kind of like the hype men of the team and they keep everyone's spirits up nishinoya on the other hand is super crucial as a libido of the team too like he is really good at receiving uh, spikes and whatnot mans, doing, mans keeps him We're in the game in so many situations bro in season my, three oh, that one receive against uh, Chito, uh Chito, 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 Chito 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 was, uh main um, spiker i forget what his name is exactly but yeah nishinoya has some crazy like spin move received that he does it's outrageous it's so cool yeah he's he's easily one of like i mean i don't want to say like anyone is really more important than other one because everyone plays an important role within the team as in terms of players and in terms of like the dynamic within the team but i mean karasuno wouldn't be able to win without any of their it's just yeah they're but, all yeah, Noya is very 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 key i mean he's him and daichi are the backbone of like karasuno's defense like yeah noya and daichi are their are the defensive line basically and, yeah and they mentioned that in like season three and season two without daichi and nishinoya karasuno wouldn't be as good as they are right they were right. they're oh, yeah. they are the key receivers for any sort of spikes any sort of serves and whatnot without either one of them it, their team would be struggling right and there is one situation and i believe in season two when daichi actually has to step out of the game uh, and then that actually puts a test on their team it really puts a kind of a stressor on them to kind of fill that role you know Thank you, Flamenco. We're having a good time hanging out. Yeah, yeah that was a good too. episode, too. Very good and, episode. And you actually meet another second year who is pot- potentially the next team captain, right? Another really, really great individual. Yeah. Um, oh, excuse me. Mm. No worries. No worries. And yeah. then you, you meet a lot of teams and a lot of individuals in season one and in season two. You'll meet, uh, I believe you meet Kenma from Nekoma, right? I think you meet him in season one. You see, you meet him in one. They play them in season one. They have a practice game. Okay. Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. We meet the whole and you, team. And you see, like, in that match, even Kageyama and individuals learn. They learn different plays at, from him, right? Oh, from yeah. Kenma mm-hmm. specifically. Kenma and his team, Nekoma. Uh, obviously, you guys see Neko. So they're like the cat individuals, cat like individuals. And mm-hmm. when they play them, you actually learn little moves, right? Where Kenma does that one, like, little, like, look fake. And Kageyama absorbs that and is like, all right, I'm going to do that too. And you see that a lot. I always really enjoy that kind of stuff, like the different tactics and strategies that individuals use that help the team as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, and side Kenma's note, so but... good. He's so good at volleyball. Just wait. Just wait. I, I hate – it's like part of me, I really want to talk about it, and I know if it ever happens and we can talk about later season, I'm excited. 
Like, there's Kenma's so much. Awesome. I love oh, Ke- Kenma and... is Shikamaru. <laughs> I love him. Yes. <laughs> so apathetic, but just so good at the yeah. same time. I mean, you you do see a lot of that kind of stuff that's going to be coming in the future. I mean, remember, uh, Nine Lives, that we will actually be doing further podcasts where we will touch upon our favorite animes that we've reviewed, like Jujutsu Kaisen and whatnot, and talk about their later part, portions of their seasons or their later arcs that we didn't touch upon in the first podcast that we did for them. So this might mm. be one of them. You never know. <laughs> Perfect. Well, you just let me know. Um, on a side note, I wanted to talk a little bit about something I noticed in the show, and I absolutely love this because I see it in manga, of course, all the time, but I very rarely see it in anime. In the manga, um, there is a complete subbing of all background conversation happening, let alone a lot of background conversation, which I really liked. You don't see that in a lot of anime, but as, as we said, this anime focuses heavily on all the characters. There's not a lot of people left out. And while you're reading the subs at the bottom, you have subs happening at the top of the screen of other characters yelling at each other, having background conversations. You have um, the crowd chanting in. And this is very informative. A lot of this information is helpful during the game. Um, like, say, Kage or Tanaka's like yelling at someone about something, and then that becomes important in the next play. Um, I really love the subbed background. Like, you don't lose any of that, especially when watching it subbed. You lose all of that if you can't speak Japanese. You don't know what's happening in the background, but they subbed yeah, it for us, which was really cool. It's a nice touch, right? Yeah, yeah very good. Good attack to detail. Mm-hmm. And they, they spared no expense. It's a very detailed show. The animation, the subbing, the sound, like, they spent money on this. This was not cheaply produced. No, not at oh, all. Yeah. The animation is so well done. Yeah. It's really, animation. really well done. They make Yuki. they make volleyball look so hype. It's wild. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and Yuki Hayashi on the score, he's like, if you guys don't know who Yuki Hayashi is, he's the guy who does the obviously the music for Haiku. He's also done a lot of the soundtracks for My Hero Academia. Nice. Uh, some of a lot of the bigger animes have been had their OSTs made by Yuki Hayashi, and he's just he's honestly on a whole new level of like making making anime music i mean it's a, it's just so good well done yeah well done on his part i mean he has a he adds a the score of an anime really can make or break it just like any film or any movie so Absolutely. having a well-made score will really add impact to specific moments if that makes sense you know mm-hmm. oh, for sure and in season one do we actually know the relationship between kageyama and uh oikawa or is that in season two that that comes out I believe it's, it's sort of it comes a little bit in season one. Oh, they, yeah, I was no, like yeah, yeah. a little bit. You can see the frustration. I mean, there's the great king and the king. They talk about that whole setup and like why Kageyama sort of has this insecurity when it comes to Oikawa. Um, and Oikawa has this like god complex. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So there's a little bit of their relationship <laughs> there, but I think the development is probably going to happen in season two. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you don't you so the all right. So you and chat don't know their direct relationship yet all right no, so i it, won't ruin anything then. season one ends with you know the drastic end to their game yeah katasuna and that yeah that's cool it was a very drastic end to the game i didn't see it coming because they won the second round of nash they won the second round of uh, preliminaries and i was like oh they're look it's tied like this is us this is anime like we're gonna win this in the final moment no <laughs> yeah, that, and, lo- that no. loss is one of the most important like game oh incredibly to- important mm-hmm. Because if and, they would have just won, I probably wouldn't have been interested in the second season. I'd have been like, oh, okay, they're yeah. going to go on winning until they win, and then they're going to win some more, mm-hmm. and that's anime. But they've definitely chosen to take this out further and show more character development, and that loss was very important. Yeah. It's yeah. a learning experience as a whole. Uh, right? Thank you for the hydrate, better yeah. sheep. That's one thing I really like about sports anime <clears throat> is that like in Battle Shonen, when you lose a fight, that generally means someone either died or that someone's going to die or like it's some sort of like drastic consequence but in sports anime a loss is a lot it's maybe it it doesn't have such dire consequences like someone dying or anything like that but it it's a lot more of a learning experience and it still it still hits the same emotional beats yeah i feel like Um, it's very much so emotional and more of a mental strain on the characters rather than like someone died oh my god i need to like go through mourning which we were talking about previous podcasts that a lot of anime is kind of like slack on showing the mourning aspect of like losing somebody yes so Mm -hmm. you'll see that you actually see this in here how the loss affects them how devastated they are too which is really really tasteful right i really enjoy that because that shows even more of the human experience how bummed out you would be if you lose a game right so that kind of plays into it and really adds depth to the anime as a whole. 
Mm-hmm. So is there any? Yeah, oh, go, go for it. Yeah, I was going to say, in summation, not summation, but since we've kind of worked through the characters, a few things I wanted to say about the story overall, and this isn't my deep dive by any means, but the overwhelming positivity and teamwork vibes that came from this show are exactly why I was drawn in. Uh, drawn in. Like you said, I started watching it, and after like episode three, I was like, fuck yeah. I was very into it. I was like, teamwork, this is what it's all about. I'm on a few teams myself, so it just, it sprang really, it, like, it rang within me deeply. And then, um... The ability that it had to engage me with my memories of high school and playing football and junior high and stuff like it. I don't know the show, especially if you played sports or if you knew someone who did or if you were into anything really that your friends enjoyed with you. I mean, it all rings out and kind of shares that same perspective. Yeah, most yeah. Of, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think that like true team dynamics are really hard to come by in it, like shown in anime that aren't sports based. Like right. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's all kind of individual hero kind of stories. And that's fine. I mean, like, that's great in its own way, but it's very, very, uh, it's very hard to find stuff that, like, you know, Haikyuu's biggest, like, one of its biggest uh, thematic, them, uh, one of its biggest themes that it, that it pushes from chapter one, from episode one, is that volleyball is a team sport, and you can't, no one can win volleyball by themselves. And for that reason, I right. think it's Hence very season three. Season three. That's all I got to say. Season three. Man. Season three. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they talk about it, the touch rules. And, I mean, the, it's just a perfect basis. Whoever, like someone was sitting there, the, 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 the uh, author was sitting there one day and was like, it just hit them. I feel like they were like, oh, volleyball. Duh. Yeah, duh. <laughs> like, exactly, guys. All right, so is it is it crunch time? Is it crunch time? I'm down. We can get into crunch it, time. You ready for this? It's chat? Crunch time. All right, let me sure. go ahead. Hit, let me hit him with a Jeopardy uh, soundtrack, and let's go ahead and uh, do our little deduction. Oh moment God, <laughs> get it. That's All right. awesome. So, let's see. I'm digesting at the moment. I'm thinking about it. Nine I always lives, wait for up. this very moment to get my rating too. I don't think about my rating my, until right now. My rating? Yep. What's uh, your rating of high Q? Out of uh, out of ten, what would you give it? Ten out of ten. Easily. Easy <laughs> ten out of ten. I love I love high This is Here's like a question. top um, three favorites. If you could pick uh-huh. one thing that could be improved about the series, what would it be? Since you gave it a ten out of ten. There you Ooh, go. Hmm. Okay. Uh can you guys give your ratings and come back to me for that yeah. question? Can, yeah, give me a He's yeah, like, there's yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with it. You're wrong, Nova. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's definitely things that could be improved, but I'm just like, I'm not sure. Awesome. You want to go next, Fallen? It's uh, one of your uh, favorite let me series. Am- yeah, let me answer the chat real fast. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I hope you guys are doing well today. And thanks so much for being here, chat. Better Shelf, thank you so much for the lurk. Melito, you're fucking awesome. I appreciate you guys coming into the channel. Swamp City, coming in and dropping biddies on me. It's the first time I've got biddies during an Anime Crunch episode. So thank you very much, Swamp City. All right, so crunch time. Uh, for me, this anime is really, really well done. Um, I don't want to give it an outright 10. But I kind of want to give it an outright 10. <laughs> um, but... um. It's just so impressive how well they do the character development, man. I, it's such a fresh uh, feeling to see that, right? There's a lot of animes that are very two-dimensional and very flat mm-hmm. when it comes to characters. Mm-hmm. And this is is the complete opposite. This is like a deep ocean of character development. I give it a... Uh, I'll get... <laughs> <laughs> Like I really want to, like I want to give it like an. Uh, I don't want to give it a full ten, but it's like basically a ten. It's give it a I, nine point nine, man. Yeah, like 9. a nine point nine. Like I just there, there's probably something in there that could be improved, right? But I can't specifically specifically identify it, right? I cannot really pin put like a pinpoint what is wrong with the anime. Because they have everything. Yeah. They have the comedic okay. relief. Yeah. They have good team well, dynamics. And you guys, it's hard for you because you're a bit biased having seen what happens later. Yes, that's yeah. true. Yeah, oh, wait. Yeah. So, bet what can be approved upon for season one? Yeah, we're just discussing season one. Oh, yeah. oh okay. okay. All right. Let me read that. Right. Hold yeah, on. Let me, <laughs> well, give, give, give me a second. Come back. Come no, back but, no, but you go now. <laughs> okay. And, and, I mean, I, I appreciate the overall rating. I just mean that, that you know, you, the, the rating for the whole series wouldn't make sense to someone who hasn't seen the whole series. 
Yeah, God. you're right. Yeah, because you're I've, right. I've read the manga front to back multiple times, and I've seen the anime. And, right, uh, so you get to see a lot more. Um, I would say, for me, I'm going to give it a solid 9 of 10. I love the series. I think it's fantastic. And, and Fallen was very right. It is hard to find like i was like what could they improve upon and it's really just a personal thing for me and as much as i love the series and they did so well with the character development but we very rarely get to see these characters outside of volleyball we don't get to see i mean and we possibly mm-hmm. do later and i'm sure we do in the later seasons but as of season one it is 100 percent volleyball based they're either in the practice gym they're in the gym or they're sitting in you know the club room talking about volleyball there's never really um there's a couple outings like during the training camp but that's not really an outing they're at a training camp talking about volleyball so i'd you love to give, see that's a really good point yeah mm-hmm. good point. so that's, that's why that's it gets what i was gonna ten. say if there's anything that could there's two things that i think can be improved upon and one of them is that you know i would love to see a little bit more expansion on you know outside of volleyball and i get that yeah, it's the volleyball anime. right you know there's not really you know food without they didn't need to to draw see you know just plain slice of life scenes it would have been great for the characters and there is a little bit throughout the series but for the most part it's all volleyball yeah it's and all then, volleyball focused mm-hmm. i mean even when they're out like eating like dinner after certain games and whatnot like it's still heavy volleyball focus it's all they're always right. talking about volleyball which it makes sense right as a soccer player growing up yeah, my, there's nothing like, wrong with my it. life would revolve around soccer when i would go out with my friends we would talk about soccer we talk about who's playing like all that kind of stuff so it's very much so a focal point in your life at in this moment in time in their lives right um because right now remember all their focuses is doing well in school and then their after like school activity is volleyball and that's, that's all they're hyper focused yeah. on so it's not really much else that they're doing you do see little inklings of like oikawa like all the women flaunt to him and all that kind of stuff so you do see some sort of like inkling as to who they are outside of volleyball and you do see a little bit more with oikawa in later seasons too about who how they react and how they like function outside of volleyball but still it's all focused on volleyball so i guess yeah I, with that mo- notion i'll give it a nine i have vagabond in chat saying an eight out of ten okay he said it's he said it's really good first half was slow though but it had a certain charm that kept me around until i got really good in the second half oh very true. well said very it, well said it, i agree it, yeah i agree with that yeah i can't argue <laughs> i can't I, argue I, with it I can, see, I can see why people say it's a little slow for me, I was it. I got episode one or two. I was in, but there are like I can see why someone might think it's a little bit. Slow, yeah, I mean, so. in the first season, I mean, we only see a few games. the The first half of yeah. the season is slow. It's practice and practice games, and then like the last, I think six or seven episodes are just games. Like it's packed full of the nationals or not nationals preliminaries preliminary but like it's also you got to keep in mind like it's definitely i can see how the first season's like first half will be slow because if you're not someone who's used to to sports yeah if you're not used to if you're not an individual who's used to sports animes right you're not used to the and you or if you have never played sports before right that kind of stuff i mean going into the training portion and whatnot they probably some people might be put off by it they might not enjoy it they might not really understand it so that's something that can also be taken into account when you're viewing it from the first season because we don't really I mean, a lot of individuals like the battle shonen right where they get right into that shit they go right into it it's a huge like hook right away whereas this one's more so you have to kind of like look at it from a different perspective or a different lens when you're viewing it if you're used to that type of anime Does that makes sense oh absolutely Absolutely. I think you're right. That's probably why it's so slow in the beginning is to kind of try to introduce the viewers who weren't used to going to practice or playing sports or or maybe were, you know, more introverted and didn't have a a big group that they ran around with in HS or whatever. But uh, I Mm -hmm. think it it accomplished the goal and it still got a nine of ten from me. (laughs) Yeah, well, definitely. I agree. I'll definitely be continuing the series, and um, I think we should. I think we should meet back up and maybe talk about season two. Like, well, the next time we could meet up and just like talk about the rest of the series. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not oh, even discuss. Vagabond. Yeah. What's up? Vagabond? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Vagabond. Yeah, that's actual What's like. Up? That's Chris. Yeah. What's up, Chris? <laughs> I didn't realize it too. What's up, man? Yeah, Chris. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you actually know Nine Lives is a uh, Catsby. Um, he's one of the other one of the other gloving homies from back in the day. And one of my oh yeah, viewers... I was I was playing Valorant with Chris yesterday actually. Oh hell, hell yeah, yeah, dude! <laughs> yeah, one of my viewers is gonna watch it now because they hadn't heard about it until um our stream. So, uh, I'll make sure to get their rating too and get back to you guys. With yeah, that. Swamp City, we're Most gonna definitely. want your rating on the series once you finish season mm-hmm. one. 
yeah we can meet yeah. back and kind of like cover the remaining portion of the anime that's been done right, right. in later podcasts as well oh, and we'll, we'll push but, this out a few months but still it yeah, can yeah, yeah most definitely no that's oh, just man. like we did with jujutsu kaisen we're gonna push it off a little bit longer and then we'll eventually circle back to like the latter portion of that arc right right oh speaking of jjk are you excited for the movie yo super hype <laughs> i mean we just got demon slayer so now i'm super excited for jujutsu kaisen right I'm Did super excited that? for Chainsaw Man coming out soon. I believe it's in July or it's in fall. But I'm I excited for that one too. Be fall, but yeah, yeah, I've heard DSM is really good. I've been uh, meaning to read it, but I just haven't gone around to it. I, I gotta find know. someone to go see these movies with. <laughs> yeah, Chainsaw Man is gonna be super. It's it's very meta, right? The meta right now is slaying demons, right? You see that in Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man. They have that meta. They've all been winning the awards of being the number one anime Yo. for 2019, 2020. So yeah. all that kind of stuff that's happening. I do believe uh, Chainsaw Man has a fresh take on the uh, concept of demons, right? Whereas a lot of them, the demons are kind of focused on like um, either human experience, creates some stuff like that. Um, Chainsaw Man has a demon for everything, right? So you have, uh, and that that like basically is the basis of how lethal it is. So the first one of the first demons that you see is like the um, is the sea cucumber demon, and like it just doesn't do anything. It's a sea cucumber, so it's not really a high threat level. So like they'll people will just call call it in, and like you'll have the demon slayer group come in and kill it. But then you have other individuals like the big bad is the gun demon because in re- reality a gun is super lethal, so that demon is now super lethal. Right. And your mm-hmm. main your main protagonist is the chainsaw demon, right? So that's your main individual. So he's also lethal, but not as lethal as a gun, which then you kind of see the development of like, all right, he has to work in a group to take on this even stronger demon, if that makes sense. That sounds very mm-hmm. traditional. The Japanese actually do have Oni demons for pretty much everything, and they are classified. Like, some Oni demons aren't even considered necessarily bad. Like, they're just like, they're either like, you know, kind of trolls, or they tease, or they're like cute. So the Jap- that makes that's very traditional. I like that. Yeah, it's a really nice fresh take on the demon concept and the theme. Um, and then I see this as a very much so a meta, right? You see this in Jujutsu Kaisen, you see this in Naruto, where like the big one of the quote unquote like uh, main character fuses or is uh, to, like formed together with another demon individual, right? Mm-hmm. You see that in Sakuna with uh, Itadori and Jujutsu Kaisen. You see that with Kurama and Naruto. So this kind of takes that kind of premise as well. Mm hmm yeah interesting no, do you guys I'm, want to uh oh, see, go ahead no chainsaw man is one of my favorite or one of my friend's favorite series and she's she's been on me to read that so i'll be i'll be on it soon hell hell yeah dude well anyways guys i appreciate each and every one of you for being here man yo nova you're a fantastic human being and i appreciate you as a wonderful co-host and nine lives you're always a very valued guest analyst in here we really appreciate your opinions and your views and your fresh perspectives on anime i really appreciate both of you thank you guys for being here man yeah no problem before we go real quick let's talk real quick about the next uh next episode oh yes the next three yeah yeah Yeah, um and we're not going to leave those up for very long chat because we want to give we've been trying to we've been putting the votes up and then not like announcing until a week beforehand so we're gonna we're just gonna give it three days that way everyone has about a week and a half to get through the series instead of just a week but the vote is up it's uh gundam iron-blooded orphans which is a series it's my selections this week i love that series it's actually brought me to tears um do rah rah another series i relate with very no do rah 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 is so good i've put it up a few times i know chat but i really want to get in there with it and then psychopaths which was another uh, like sci-fi thriller anime that i really loved um, and I believe I've put all three of those up before, but neither of them have won. So I decided, well, let's give them a second shot. <laughs> yeah, no, Psycho Pass is incredible. And Do Ra 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 is so nice. I love the fresh take because there is some sort of like supernatural elements in it. But it's also very much so a lot of human experience. Bro, the Dollars Gang is awesome. It's so I, cool, I right? Like that Slice of Life, dude. but also kind of fantasy. Like, it's really cool. Well, Nine Lives, have you seen Do Ra Ra Ra? I, I saw it a while ago. I haven't watched it lately, though. Uh, dude, it's amazing. Yo, Selty is uh, Ultimate Bay as well. Ultimate Bay. <laughs> ultimate Waifu. Selty. Ultimate Bay. Ultimate <laughs> Waifu. <laughs> but yeah, guys, I appreciate all of you. Definitely, if you guys are interested uh, to vote on the actual uh, animes for the next deep dive, uh, join my Discord with Command Discord or join Nova's Discord with Command Discord. You guys can hop into the Anime Crunch section in the text channels and go ahead and vote with a nice little emote reaction. 
I, we appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so mm. much. Fallen, yeah, I always appreciate easy, you. Guys. You guys are great co-hosts. Thank you very much, Nine Lives and Fallen Neophyte. You guys are amazing. No yeah, problem, man. Thank you so always much. Always fun, guys. Take it easy. Take, Take it, it easy, easy, guys. All right, chat. We'll do our little wrap up. I want to thank Fallen again. Um, I shouted him out in chat, and I want to thank all of you guys for being here. Better Shelf, um, Flamenco, Swamp City. I really appreciate it. Jim Jam, you guys being here helping me get this up because this obviously um isn't my best content. Like people don't really like to watch this as much as they like to watch my drift content. But anime and manga are very important to me, and I'm not going to give up on it. You know what I mean? So I understand that uh, this might not be the content that people want to watch. Um, so I just even Melito, you know, you said you're leaving the lurk. I appreciate that very much. It helps the channel. Um, thank you so much. And by no means are you guys required to. If you don't want to watch Anime Crunch, if you're not into it, please don't. But I'm not going to give up on it. It means a lot to me. Even if it drags my average down for the time being, this show is going to develop and I'm going to carry it on. And uh, hopefully it'll turn into something. We're thinking about carrying it over to YouTube. I'm going to try and rip the audio and make a podcast out of this so you guys can listen to it when you're working out or driving to work or whatever. But thank you guys so much for being here. I'm Cause Nova. This was the Anime Crunch show in the deep dive on this first season of the series. Hi Q. As I mentioned earlier my discord is in chat jump in there and vote on the next series we'll be selecting that in three days from now the winner will be the selected series and we will be meeting two sundays from now to discuss that series so thank you guys so much for being here once again i'm cause nova i love you i have the best fucking community in the world and i'm out of here let's get out of here um i don't think i'm even gonna raid today we don't really need to raid we could see let's see who's on and uh yeah we'll do it we'll, we'll see who's on Try to help out any homies that are playing. Oh, Miss Kroger is on. Heck yeah. We're going to raid Miss Kroger. Um, Well, actually, one of my teammates is on. Want to raid Miss Kroger, but Misfit Kings is on, and that's my teammate from Team Devolve, so we are going to raid him. Why did that just go away? I want to see his name. MSFT Kings. Got it. MSFT Kings. All right, guys. I love you all. Take it easy. Let's get this raid going. Uh, this is a friend of mine. Um, all, like I said, fellow Devolve team members playing some Valorant. So just stop in, say hello. No follows or anything if you don't feel up to it, you don't like the content. But it is a good person, and I like Misfit King. So we're raiding him out. Love you guys. Cause Nova. Peace. Blue sets died. Name is dead. Sure. No, but with the raid, brother. With the host, sorry. What's good, bro? Thank you for that. Much, much respect. What up, guys? You. That's very, uh, very nice of you, brother. Thank you. Whew. We're actually switching over to, um... That was a great Valor. episode. Yeah, that was a great episode. Um, because I was thinking, like, oh, I'm gonna you, clip brother. these down.